are your orchid leaves looking like this? And they turn up looking like something like that after a while. Well, let's have a look as to what it could be, how we can prevent it from happening, and if you have it already, how we can stop it from spreading. Welcome to The Nature Company. If this is the kind of information you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and that notification bell to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. So just in case you're new to orchids, this is actually a fungal disease and we know they can be quite dramatic and cause devastation to your plants. They'll spread quickly, they'll grow quickly, and they vary unsightly. This specific one is called Circospora. It's specifically virulent during those warmest months of the year when temperatures are around 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. So that's about 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And when the humidity levels are high, this is when this specific fungus likes to grow quickly. Its spores will germinate and it will infect your plant, making it look like this in no time at all. So it's at these times of years that we need to be particularly vigilant and watch out for the early signs. The early signs are going to be these soft, almost yellowishy spots that will occur onto your leaf. Often they will start from the underside before they actually show themselves on the top side and if you feel them they're a little bit sunken. These will then slowly form these sort of black markings. The circospora almost looks like it's been tattooed onto your orchid leaf. It's almost like it's lots of small little dots all put together in these irregular shapes. Often sort of roundish in nature where they start to coalesce into larger lesions if you want to call it that um, and eventually they'll take over the whole leaf leaving almost the whole leaf almost black it will cause early drop in the leaf yellowing discolorations and then eventually your leaves will fall off it's generally not fatal to your plant if caught early enough if you let it rampage through your plant it will grow in through the pseudobulbs and then you're going to have complete death of your plant often it will start off at the lower leaves which are closer to your media, which is holding all that moisture. So obviously there is where your humidity levels are going to be higher. And that's where it will start off and then slowly spread its way as the spores come onto the new leaves. And with heavily infected plants, it will eventually start causing leaf deformities. Then you know how badly your plant is doing. But still at this point, it is still savable. We can see all this new growth with the new flower spike coming. So it's a matter of making sure that you treat it correctly. So Circospora, not necessarily fatal as long as you treat. Also one of the ways to identify that it's Circospora is these fine little black dots which will appear after you've seen those little yellowish indents in your leaf. These little black dots appear with this yellowing halo around them. This is the active growth phase of the, the fungus itself as it starts spreading through the leaf tissue. So you actually know that all of that part of the plant has been infected by the hypha of the fungus. And it's also one of the identifying markings of Circospora. These yellow halos, that yellow or even sometimes brownish halos that will appear around the active growing fungus. With it being especially prevalent at certain times of year, as we sort of head towards autumn, our temperatures start to dip slightly, but still we're quite warm. So we're above that 20 degrees but the heat has gone. So we land up with longer hours where the plant is left wet and the evaporation hasn't taken place, although we're still getting the rain. So our plant stays wetter for longer and this is what's gonna cause the circospora to really spread. How does it spread? How do you get it? Well, there's basically four main factors that you have to look at. One is the cleanliness of your area. If you're not sanitizing, if you're leaving dead plant material around, in and around the area where your orchids are. The fungus is going to set in there in that dead material, produce its spores, and those spores are going to spread up to your plants. So ensure cleanliness and the hygiene of your growing area to ensure that you're not going to be getting the circospora spreading through your orchids. Also, if you are crowding your orchids into a small space, when they haven't got enough air movement around them, this is also going to breed those conditions that Circospora likes to reproduce in, and you're gonna start having problems again. 
So give your orchid space, allow for that air movement to come through so that the breeze can blow that excess humidity away, allowing your plants to dry off. Also, stress. Stress is a big thing. What the stress does to your plant is it reduces its ability to fight off disease and this is when circospora can set in. So things like physical damage, for instance like when you're repotting your orchid, if you break a leaf, all that sort of damage, it can easily set in. With something like that, your best bet is to use something like a cinnamon just to wipe on those broken off ends or something just to seal it off and stop any fungal infections and entering that way. Also, the water conditions of your plants, whether you're overwatering, whether you're watering from above, whether they open to the elements and getting the rain. If you can at all, avoid top watering. This will help reduce the prevalence of Circospora on your orchids, less likely for the fungus to take hold of the leaves because all the moisture is going to be in the pot and not on the leaves. So also beware of overwatering because they like that damp humid conditions ensure they do get those chances to dry out enough that they can keep themselves in a good condition. Also nutrient deficiencies can reduce the vigor of your plants make them less able to fight off disease so always a good idea to make sure your orchids are well looked after. So now we've gone through what it is and why it comes, let's have a look at prevention. How can we prevent it from coming in the first place? I'll put the link below for the prevention techniques. It's things like the natural oils, the cinnamon powders. Also, there's another amazing thing that Laurie, thank you very much, you brought up for me, is the biological controls. These biological control measures are often in the form of a bacteria, a beneficial bacteria such as the bacillus or the trichodermas. In the case of revitalized, it's one of the bacillus bacteria that is used. So what the bacteria does, it forms a colony around the rhizomatic area of the orchid itself, which outcompetes a lot of the fungal growths and the fungal spores and some of the pathogenic bacteria as well. What has been proven in vanilla orchids is that this bacillus actually goes up into the plant itself, into the Mary stem, and actually helps provide the plant with enzymes that allow for the plant's own immune defense system to work better as well, which is not only gonna help fight off the, the fungus, but other problems too. So this biological control is an excellent thing to add into your integrated pest control management systems, because it's always easier for the plant to fight off the disease than for us to try and cure the plant of the disease. And now it comes to actually trying to cure the plant of the disease once it's got to a point where you've suddenly realized what it is and you don't want to spread to your other plants. Quarantine immediately. This is as soon as you see any sign of fungus, quarantine your plants so that the fungus itself doesn't have a chance to spread to your other plants because they really will. They'll go through everything in a matter of days. So quarantine your plant and remove any of the material that is infected. This is going to help reduce the chances of further infection. And with removal, ensure your equipment is clean and make sure you dispose of these infected parts. Don't go put them out in your compost heap thinking it's all part of nature. What's going to happen? is your fungus is just going to proliferate in your compost heap and then be spread straight back to your orchids. So dispose of them either by burning or by throwing them into the, the tip so that your neighbors have to deal with it and not you. So now for a lot of these commercial fungicides they are actually quite toxic chemicals so please ensure you're wearing the correct protective gear when spraying your plants with them. So products with the active ingredient Chlorothalonil are a broad spectrum fungicide that you can use to treat Circospora. It's going to be a foliar spray that you're going to be spraying onto your plant that's going to help disrupt the cell membranes of your fungus. What it will do, it will inhibit the fungal cell wall membrane and this will disrupt the functioning of the fungus itself. Mancozeb 
is also a contact fungicide. It's going to stop the germination of your fungal spores on your orchids. So it's also an excellent product to use to stop the spread of fungus through your orchid collection. But if you're looking for longer lasting protection, then you're going to be, have to be looking at the systemic fungicides. These provide a longer period of protection as they are drawn up into the plant, spread through the plant through its vascular system and held in the plant for extended periods of time. So any of the products that include thiophate methyl or propoconazole are all systemic fungicides and will, will help kill off this fungus that is in your plant and the fungus that wants to then attack your plant too. If your plant has had a severe infection like this, I would always suggest go with the systemic fungicide first, make sure that that's been drawn up into your plant and then after two weeks go ahead and spray it with a contact fungicide to ensure any of the other spores that have been around are then killed too. So with controlling fungus on orchids or any other plants for that matter, it's a matter of alternating your fungicides so that you don't build up fungicide resistance. Because if you, as soon as you have a resistant fungus in your midst, you're never going to be able to use that product again because that fungus will never be killed and it can attack anything that it wants to and you'll have to fight it off with something else until it becomes resistant to that. So remember always to alternate your fungicides. There are also other fungicides such as Captan, which is also an excellent product that can be used on all your orchids. And then of course, your copper fungicides. But these, you have to be wary that the fungicides containing copper are specifically problematic to certain orchids, especially things like Phalaenopsis, Paphiopedilums, Miltoniopsis. A lot of the thin-leafed orchids find that this excess copper causes phytotoxicity to them because it is drawn up so quickly into their leaves. And not only will the copper kill off the fungus, but it will do the same as it's doing to the fungus to the leaves of your plant. So when using copper fungicides, be aware of which orchids you're going to spray with it. We have opened up membership on Buy Me A Coffee if you need specific help with your orchid and we can help you there. If you find any of this information helpful, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already and that notification bell. Bing bong! To be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing.